On July 29, 1990, in El Cajon, California, dispatcher Debbie Barker began her shift at 6.30 a.m. We normally get disturbance calls and audible alarm calls and that type of thing, barking dogs, loud parties, and kids playing on the phone. But there are times when we get the calls that are completely different. Emergency operator. My, um, my dad's scaring me. He's talking weird. Okay, how old are you? Six. Are you there alone with your dad? No, they're divorced and my dad's talking weird. Please come quick. Okay, um, are there any weapons in your house? No. You live at 558. And when she said, my daddy's scaring me, he's talking weird. Right then and there, I had no idea, but I knew we had to get somebody out there now. I didn't care what the problem was at this particular point in time. Because of the emotion in her voice, I knew she was genuinely scared. What's your dad's name? Frank. Frank what? Hector. Frank Green Hector. Okay. Officer Fred Van Every was sent to the scene. What's your name? Megan. Megan Seckner? Mm-hmm. Ann Seckner. Is your dad drinking today or anything? No. I didn't know if her dad had been hitting her and she had snuck away to call. He maybe was chasing her. I had no idea. Where's your mom? She's at my grandma's house in Temecula. Okay. I feel like I want to walk home. Okay, well, why don't you just stay on the phone with me and we're going to send someone to talk to you, okay? Does your dad know you're calling us right now? No. Okay. Is he in another room? <laughs> He's in the same room that I am. Okay, he doesn't realize that you're on the telephone with me? He does. He does? But he just doesn't know who you're talking to? Mm -mm. Please come quick. We will just make it try and calm down just a little bit, okay? We're going to have officers on the way to your house in just a couple minutes, and they should meet us very shortly. Okay, but I want you to stay on the phone with me until we get there, okay? Okay. Okay, try and just he's calm down. Drilling. He's drilling. What? Please come quick. We will. What did you say he's doing? Drilling. Drilling? What, what is drilling? I don't know. You don't know what drilling is? You just know he's drilling, but you don't know what that is? Yeah. Is he fixing something that's broken with the drill? No. Does he have He's any? on the couch. He's on the couch? Is he awake? Yes. Please, I want to get off the phone. You know, I have children of my own, okay. so I can understand when children are scared, you want to try and okay. empathize with them. The but she wouldn't elaborate on what he was doing to scare her. What does drilling mean? Like, is he asking you a bunch of questions? Is that like that? No, he's just... It's like saliva. Oh, drooling. He's drooling. Does he need an ambulance? Yeah, I think so. You think he needs an ambulance? Mm -hmm. Stay on the line. I'm going to transfer you to the paramedics. Don't hang up, okay, Megan? Okay. I've explained the situation to them, told them we were already on the way, but I was still going to keep her on the line with me until we got there. Rescue units from the El Cajon Fire Department were dispatched to the scene without any further information on the problem. Megan? Okay, we're going to send a paramedic to check on your daddy and make sure he's okay, okay? I want my mom. Okay, I know you want your mommy, and I know you're really scared right now, but you're doing a really good job, and if you can just stay on the phone and talk to me for a couple of minutes, that'll be great. You did a really good job. You know, that's really great that you called when you were worried about your dad and when you were scared. And that's what 911 is for. Okay? Okay, sweetheart. I want to hang up. I know you do, sweetheart, but I would really appreciate it if you could just talk to me just for a couple more minutes, okay? What's your daddy doing right now? He's just sitting on the couch. He's just sitting on the couch? Okay. He doesn't have any, like, beer bottles. Within three minutes of the call, Officer Van Every arrived on the scene. Has he been drinking anything at all? Like, does he have a glass of water or yeah. anything? He's there? Okay, you answer the door. Don't hang up, okay? Just leave the phone off the hook. My daddy, my daddy over there! What's the matter with them? I don't know. Sir, wake up. Sir? I thought he was dead when I first got there. Frank. Frank? I can really see any, uh, respiration at that time. What's wrong with your dad? I wanted to see the policeman because I knew he would help my daddy. I checked his pupils, which were unresponsive. I tried to shake him, to wake him up and talk to him, and got no response. Fire department EMTs arrived soon after the officer. Frank, can you hear me, sir? What do you got? I don't know, he's got a saliva. What's his name, Mel? Frank. 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 Can you understand me? Frank. The little girl is real scared, uh, real worried about her dad. Cougar, you get the VP, I'll get the O2. 
Within two more minutes, the advanced life support units got to Frank Seckner's apartment. Okay, we got a medical alert tag here. What's it say? He's, uh, diabetic. Get you a pulse in a minute here. Okay, you got the BP, I got the O2. 49-year-old Frank Seckner was in a diabetic coma. Paramedic Dave Rickards and his partner took charge of his care. When we first came through the door and saw Frank, it looked like he was in a deep unconscious state. Okay, did you find any insulin in the refrigerator? I checked. We went ahead and did a blood glucose analysis, and that told us that his blood sugar was real low. In fact, Frank's blood sugar was so low it didn't register on a machine at that point. Frank's condition was pretty serious. Okay, Dave, I have an IV established with a 18-gauge uh, to the left AC. We went ahead and gave him some uh, dextrose. And what that does is kind of like a, a large loading dose of sugar. And it goes right to the brain and starts the brain's functions back. Okay, D50 is on board. Frank, can you hear us yet? He's got some eyes are fluttering there. As he was coming out of his unconscious state, we were beginning to ask him, did you hurt anywhere? Um, what day is it? And he was a little slow to respond at first. He uh, was still a little on a disoriented side, but after a few moments uh, of awakening, getting some more juice into his system, uh, he was able to answer all our questions. He was back to normal. Less than 10 minutes had passed since the first help arrived. When he was aware of his surroundings, he was thinking, hey, where's my daughter? Yeah, okay. Come on, your daddy's all better now. Would you like to go talk to him? Okay, Let's Megan. Let's go and talk to him. You go with him, Megan. He's going to be real fine, okay? When Megan saw her dad, uh, she just lit up. Where's your daddy? All right. And we let him know that, yeah, Megan was the one that saved her life. Megan, good job, Megan. Okay. Good job. There you go, My partner, Bob, went down and got a, uh, what we call a comfort teddy bear. And once she saw that uh, her dad was okay, I think the... The teddy bear uh, kind of clenched it for her, and she felt safe at that point. Pretty special. Frank Seckner is alive today thanks to his daughter, Megan, and his former wife, Lynn, who taught their little girl how to call 911. I was just really grieved that I wasn't there when she needed me. That was my first reaction, was that I hadn't been there and she had gone through something really horrible by herself. Then I felt just a real pride that she had done what she needed to do to take care of herself and to save her dad. Putting anybody through an, an experience like that is just... Uh, it just tears at, the, at your insides, you know. It's just something that uh, you don't want to put anybody through, especially a child, especially your child. Even though I was scared, I was happy when the lady answered the phone. All parents should teach their children to call 911. <laughs> she did something that was just very, very special. She, uh, she, she's a hero.